Yo, what's good YouTube? It's your host HD Samurai here and welcome to the channel. Today I'm here to bring you guys another part 2 What if Naruto had Loxus' abilities? Part 5. Thank you all so much for tuning into this What If. But right before we get into this video guys, I want to first of all thank you all so much for your support. As thanks to all you guys, this channel has been growing a lot and we're getting closer and closer to 10k and I'm really appreciative to you guys. And honestly, you guys are really amazing with it. Hopefully we reach 10k soon. I'm hoping for it as I'm here, you know, posting videos and everything, but still, I think y'all support nonetheless. So, be before we begin, guys, like, you guys can type down below anything you guys want. Just make sure it's appropriate and, you know, just, like, give me, like, for example, like, what if ideas or anything, like, you're feeling, how your day goes. As I do sometimes go down there and read the comments, it's very relaxing. You guys have some very interesting lives, some very interesting what if ideas. You know it. And honestly, I don't really got much else to announce since things have been going quite swell lately, so, yeah. Thank y'all so much for being here. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. And why don't we just get started with this what if? Because I know y'all been waiting for it. So with that being said, let's get started. You're never gonna make it. You're not good enough. There's a million other people with the same stuff. You really think you're different, man. You must be kidding. Think you're gonna hit it, but you just don't get it. It's impossible. It's not probable. You're irresponsible. Too many obstacles. You gotta stop it, though. You gotta take it slow. You can't be a pro. Don't waste your time no more. Who the fuck are you to tell me what to do? Alright guys, let's begin this part to this what if. Hopefully you guys do enjoy. Uh, before we do, please ignore any stuttering or like any background noises. If you guys can do that, I really appreciate it. Plus, it will make my videos 1,000 times better. And hopefully you guys understand that and hopefully you guys are okay with it. But besides that, let's begin. So guys, we now begin this what if where we last left off. It's been now a few days since the events of the Konoha Crush. Now at this point now, Gara and the rest of his siblings were let released, as currently right now, Kona had too much, too many things to deal with, to deal with the Sans trio, so they were let go, they were like able to return back to Suna and everything, but right now they have different things to matter for. But that's not important, right now we should focus on our local Jinjuriki, who's currently right now going through a struggle. This will be Naruto, as currently right now he'll be sitting down in the hospital with a blank look. He's been like this for ever since he even landed here. Ever since he realized that he failed to protect his very home in the forest. As Naruto will be there, he'll be staring down at, you know, his heart monitor and everything before he sighs, taking away all the cables and everything, getting away from the bed, and soon hopping out the window as he rushes to his home in the forest. As with the bull lining, he ends up appearing there in a few seconds, unaware that Jiraiya was following him silently, observing him while feeling regret that he didn't arrive sooner. So we now turn to when Naruto arrives back to his home, and as he does, he could always see the devastation that was that was once his home. The entire home that was in the forest that he built himself with his bare hands, everything. All the jutsus that he collected, everything he worked for, all of it was destroyed. There was barely anything left. Naruto would be there staring down at his broken home. And for the first time in a long time, Naruto would feel it. At this, he would feel his eyes get a little bit moist as he would then touch a little wet spot that was on his face. These were tears. Now Naruto will look at his home as he tries to force his body not to cry. I, no, no, I, I, I can't, I can't. As he would try saying this over and over again, unfortunately Naruto couldn't hold it in. After all, he was just human. At this, Naruto will be bursting with tears as he looks down into his destroyed home as he felt weak at the knees at this very moment, collapsing down on the ground. This would signify the very first time, the very first time that Naruto had failed, and the very first time that Naruto had broken down. This was Naruto's first, and yet this would be his biggest failure. With Naruto soon realizing that even with all his strength, he just wasn't strong enough. He wasn't strong enough to do everything by himself. Naruto had never felt this weak before in his entire life, yet here he was, crying, slobbering. He looked honestly kind of pathetic. As Naruto would be there crying, Jiraiya, who was seeing this, couldn't allow it to happen any further. As is when he then suddenly steps out. At this, Naruto, feeling the presence, would then try to shake off the tears. <laughs> what are you doing here, pervert? Naruto would say as he tries to get rid of the tears, standing up as he then glares angrily at Jiraiya with red eyes. Jiraiya would be there looking at the look as he remembers a similar expression on a different kid's face. He would shake his head away from those thoughts as he then walks over to Naruto. And as Naruto prepares to combat, thinking that the guy was going to do something, this is when suddenly Jiraiya would then casually put a hand on Naruto's shoulder, bending down as he then sends Naruto a look of pity. Look, kid, I, I understand, but this is when Naruto would instantly slap Jiraiya's hand off his shoulder as he screams at the old man. As he never wanted that look of pity, he hated it more than anything else in the world. He shouts to Jiraiya that he doesn't care about what he thinks. He doesn't need Jiraiya's word of soothing and care. He never needed it. 
Naruto was breaking down fully, like he was very emotionally vulnerable. But Jiraiya just sat there and took it all, as Naruto would scream at him, yelling at him, as he wanted nothing more to punch Jiraiya in the face, but unfortunately, just by the emotional exhaustion, Naruto was not able to do so. As after a while, Naruto would be panting after screaming out and releasing all his frustrations. And as he does, this one suddenly dry would then ask Naruto if he was finally done. Naruto would not say anything as this will signify Jiraiya that Naruto was done with his rant. As after seeing this, Jiraiya would then pass Naruto some of his wisdom. So if you guys didn't know, originally Haku would be the one to tell Naruto this as he told Naruto this much sooner in canon. But since Haku had already, you know, you know, finished himself off, he didn't get to tell or share that information with Naruto. So instead it would be Jiraiya telling him it. As pretty much Jiraiya would tell Naruto that even though Naruto was strong, Naruto is strong, he can only go so far on his own. And that the only way for Naruto to achieve true strength is by trusting others and fighting for others. As that's when the truest strength is shown. Now hearing this, Naruto stays silent before looking up into Jiraiya. And as he does, Jiraiya would see her for the very first time. Now he's seen Naruto on multiple occasions, but this is the first time he's seen him this vulnerable. As Naruto then asked Jiraiya, how do I know I can trust them? As Naruto, throughout his entire life, you gotta realize Naruto has some very, tr like, very deep trust issues. Like, you have you seen the way he was treated in his village? How could you trust anyone here when they treat you like doo doo? So, of course, Naruto is gonna be against trusting people. But Jiraiya would then shrug, telling Naruto that it will be a gamble. And that, yes, it might backfire on him. But as long as Naruto never gives up and is able to continue moving forward, then Naruto would soon be able to reach that unbelievable amount of strength that Jiraiya knows he has in him. Now, after hearing this, Naruto stays silent for a little bit before getting up. Now, at this, Jiraiya was watched silently as Naruto would walk over. As he this one suddenly, he then walks over to one of a ginormous boulder that was, of course, sent flying by the ginormous wind blast that Shikaku had released. Naruto would look at it before suddenly he ends up creating lightning fists as he then barraged the boulder with multiple blows. Jiraiya says nothing as he stays there watching all of this, as by the time Naruto was done, his fists were legit smoking, as in front of Naruto would be a makeshift gravestone. Jiraiya would be there watching in silence as Naruto would then place the gravestone right in front of his destroyed home. At this, Naruto would be there before suddenly getting up, as he ends up shaking away any tears that he had left. With a new amount of determination, Naruto would then decide, I'm going to get stronger, so that way something like this will never ever happen again. With those final words, Naruto's red yet determined eyes will look down at his destroyed home, signifying this as a new oath, as a way for, as a reminder for him to never give up and for him to get stronger, as from only failure may he succeed. Now with this, Jiraiya will be watching all this with a smile on his face, as this one song he didn't ask Naruto to come with him to find Tsunade. And the reason for this one was pretty simple, he wanted to train him and also connect with Naruto. Now Naruto would instantly turn to Jiraiya, as he would then have a relaxed smile on his face, surprising Jiraiya. No. Now we're going to do a time skip. So we now turn to when Naruto and Jiraiya were currently on the road, as they now go on their journey to find Tsunade. It took Jiraiya a while to convince Naruto to go with him, as Naruto did not trust Jiraiya in the least. Now sure, Jiraiya had been here to like save Naruto and all, but his own was still destroyed, and after all, he had a lot of work to do. But Jiraiya was very consistent, and he didn't give up, so Naruto reluctantly went with him. Although, he does tell Jiraiya that he doesn't trust him at all. To which Jiraiya understands, he's like, you know, it's cool, it's cool, I'll, I'll just earn your trust, don't worry about it. So yeah, now Naruto's on a journey with Jiraiya. So, I'm just gonna do a little bit of moving forward, as throughout the journey, Naruto and Jiraiya would encounter a few shenanigans, with Naruto dealing with how perverted Jiraiya was, but also just how funny Jiraiya was, as whenever they had a moment, Jiraiya would either teach Naruto something, with Jiraiya actually asking Naruto to train him, to which Naruto this time actually allows, since he was very much open to the idea of gaining stronger, even if it hurts his pride. So throughout the time of their journey, Jiraiya would be teaching Naruto certain things, whether it be different techniques or different ways to use his lightning, while also teaching Naruto about the Toad Summoning Contract. He asked Naruto to sign it eventually, to which Naruto agrees on this one, actually signing the Toad Contract. And not only that, but Jiraiya also showed Naruto the Rasengan. Naruto was deeply interested in it, and also he, it kind of reminded him of that Hyuga technique, which he also decided that he was going to have to pick up on that later as both of those techniques gave him an idea. 
So with that, Jiraiya also began teaching Naruto the Rasengan, to which let me just say right now, Naruto in this one is definitely a prodigy. As it only took him a total of four days to learn the Rasengan, and Jiraiya was thoroughly impressed as he just, he, it took him so long to learn the Jutsu, yet Naruto learned it in, a mo in an instant notice. And as he does, another thing is that Jiraiya, as Naruto and him were like training and getting along, Naruto was slowly trusting Jiraiya, but he didn't notice it. As Naruto would be doing this and having a fun time, we would then turn our attention to Konoha. As right now, Kakashi would be there as he currently had just gotten his ass kicked by both Itachi and Kisame. Luckily, a guy had appeared and interfered in the fight. As seeing that Naruto wasn't here and had head off, Itachi and Kisame had decided to head off to where Naruto went off. And while this was happening, although Guy wanted to chase after them, unfortunately, they had to take Kakashi to recovery, so they did that. So as they were there now contemplating about what to do now that Itachi and Kisame were after Naruto, this is when Sasuke would then barge into the room just as a random Jonin then enters at the same time, spilling a bunch of nonsense about how Itachi and Kisame were here and how they were after Naruto. Which, by the way, let me just tell you this right now, that guy really w did some out-of-pocket stuff right there, bro. How are you going to pretty much tell that to Sasuke? Like, how are you going to tell that in front of Sasuke? Like, did you not tell me that you did not see the boy right there in front of you? In the way that this man just barge in, freaking talking about, Itachi's here and he's after Naruto. Like, bro, no one invited you. How do you even know that? You're not even an important character. Bro, I kid you not, I laugh every single time that guy appears on screen. And just the face that guy made him, as well as the rest of the Jonins, <laughs> I'm dead, bro. I laugh. But either way, uh, moving on back to the story, Sasuke then finds out about it from that guy and instantly takes off after Itachi with Guy just, you know, being pissed off as he has to follow after him. At the same time, Inao soon arrived to when they get to a certain district as Jirai had been on a hunt collecting information on where Tsunade is. And as he does, he ends up arriving at a district where he ends up finding a very cute girl and instantly goes off to hang with her. Naruto's there watching the pearl head off as he sighs. I swear, that guy's libido has got to be on a different level, Naruto would say, as he just shakes his head before walking over to a nearby hotel, paying for a room, and then entering. As Naruto would be there, he would currently right now just be sitting down, as this one suddenly he summons out two shadow clones. And as he does, he tells both clones to sit there on the bed as he begins trying to gather up as much electricity as he can. Naruto had decided to stick this as a new way of training, as now he's trying to gather back all his electricity and in an instant. As well as Naruto's also trying to theory craft about what exactly this new source of power of his is. Now he hasn't not told it to Jiraiya yet, as even though he's slowly trusting the man which he doesn't realize it, he's still trying to keep this information a secret because even he himself doesn't know what it is. He just knows that it's powerful. So as Naruto was in the midst of his meditation training and gathering up a bunch of electricity, this is when he suddenly senses it. Two powerful presences right outside his door. Naruto's eyes narrow as this one suddenly he ends up sending a signal to one of the clones as it then gets up and walks towards the door. This one suddenly will then hear the knock. At this, Naruto walks towards the door as he opens it slowly to reveal the eyes of the Sharingan as both Itachi and Kisame were staring him down. So this is the Ninetales Jinjiriki? I have to admit, I expected more from him. At this, Naruto will look at the guy as this one suddenly he then smirks. Oh, I'm sorry, fish face. You're at the wrong place. The sushi shack is all the way at the other side of the district. Now hearing this, Kisame is instantly pissed off as this is when he then pulls out Samahara. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to chop up a few legs of yours to teach you a lesson. Now at this, Naruto smirks as this is when suddenly he then bum rushes them just as Kisame throws a ginormous slash cutting up, Naruto, cutting up Naruto's leg. However, what he didn't expect though was for the Naruto to suddenly end up sticking out his tongue, and as he does, he then suddenly explodes right in front of him. What? He would then say, as this one suddenly streams of electricity would then also shoot out, as he would then be caught up in the blast, and he would end up getting a little bit paralyzed thanks to the electricity. A clone? Kisame would say, as he couldn't be more in shock. Luckily, Itachi had escaped just at the small instant, as he had seen the attack coming. However, as he does, this one suddenly and two other Naruto's would then rush out the room. With both being supercharged by electricity, Naruto will be staring down at Itachi and then smirk. Well, looks like I'm going to have to add another body to my list. At this, Itachi would ignore Naruto's obvious taunt, as this is when both the two Naruto's would then rush over at him as they would throw two lightning hammers. 
unfortunately, Itachi was more skilled as he was able to dodge the way out of both of them. As he then suddenly grabs one of the Naruto's by the neck while kicking the clone away. As the clone would explode, this is when suddenly he also ends up, you know, moving away from the explosion while still grabbing onto Naruto. And as he does, he slams the boy onto the wall. Dang it! This guy's strong, Naruto would think mentally. As he would be trying to pry away Itachi's grip, but unfortunately, he was not doing too good. As Itachi would see this, he would then lean closer to Naruto as he tries to whisper something to him. However, Naruto was not going to let that happen, as this one suddenly he didn't knees Itachi in the gut. However, unfortunately, the attack just goes through him, as Naruto, using the opportunity, would then suddenly end up blinding Itachi with a ginormous light. Now, until Itachi was forced to close his eyes, as this one suddenly he would feel Naruto escape his grip, as Naruto had just transformed into a bolt of lightning to escape Itachi. Alright, I admit you're tougher than I expected. That doesn't change anything. You're still going to lose to me. Now, as Naruto would say this, this is when suddenly he then feels another attack behind him as he has to dodge out of the way of Samehara trying to slice him in half. Cheeky little brat, it took a while to fix that paralysis of yours. Not bad. At this, Naruto had to dodge the attack as this is when he then realizes he was up against two of them. Now, sure, while Naruto may be acting cocky and everything, he wasn't as insightful as he was last time. Now, if Naruto did not have that humble realization, he would pretty much actually think that he can beat these two. But Naruto, this time, he's not too confident in that one. Even, even though he has gone a lot of training, Naruto's not confident that he can beat these two, at least currently. So as Naruto was trying to think of a strategy, so that way he was able to actually either one, escape from these two, or in some way, like, incapacitate them, this one suddenly, a, a familiar feeling would then enter into the room. Oh, you gotta be freaking kidding me. At this bursting at the scene, we will then see Sasuke appearing as he'll be glaring ang angrily at Itachi. Now at this, Kisama will be confused as he wonders who exactly this brat was who looked similar to Itachi, with Itachi revealing that he was his kid brother. Now at this, he, Sasuke would go on on a rant talking about how he trained for this and that he, you know, holding all his hatred, his rage and everything, all for the fact that he could kill him. And this when he didn't activate Shidori trying to attack him, but you already know the scene. And boy, this ass beating was disrespectful. As legit Itachi just caught the Shidori, snapped Sasuke's wrist, beat him up, and then suddenly grabbed him by the neck and slammed him into the wall. And while he did this, he also straight up told Sasuke straight to his face that he was still weak, and then he put them under a traumatic genjutsu. Like, that's some different levels of disrespect right there. And while this was happening, Naruto was just sitting there watching all this in disbelief, as he couldn't believe that Sasuke was actually stupid enough to think he can go up against Itachi. And as he does, this is when Naruto has to once again duck out of the way of Samehara, as him and Kisame were still fighting. I have to admit, Brad, you're much stronger than I thought, but you should already know that this is the end. As Naruto once again prepares to channel up an attack, this is when he then realizes something. He loses feeling as Samehara had actually taken away some of Naruto's chakra. At this point, Naruto realized that he can't use chakra, but then this is when he then smirks. Good thing I don't need to use it. As Kisame being arrogant will begin to tell Naruto that it was pointless and that he had lost, this is when Naruto wouldn't reveal it, a technique that he's been training ever since he got ever since after the tuning exams. Now he did copy this from the Hyuga, he won't lie, but still it's a very powerful technique and it's useful. As this when a course Kisame would then swing some Mihara again, Naruto would then drive in closer, surprising him. What? At this Naruto's two Naruto's like pointer fingers would then glow as this one suddenly he ended up releasing multiple jabs all around Kisame's body. And as he does, Kisame wouldn't feel it. Multiple pressure points in different areas will then be hit simultaneously. As he ends up actually having no choice but to fall down as his arms were losing feeling and fast. What the heck is this? He would say. As he feels himself about to collapse to the ground, it wasn't over as this one Naruto wouldn't spin at rapid speeds. As this one Naruto would then reveals one of his new techniques that he's been cooking up. Lightning Dragon, Lightning Vortex. At this, Naruto would spin at rapid speed, as similar to the rotation of the Hyuga Clan, Naruto would make a ginormous Thunderdome sphere around him, as this would actually send uh, Kusame flying away, as Isame Hada, thanks to the fact it can only absorb chakra, it wasn't able to absorb the magic that Naruto was using. So due to this, Kusame was blown back, and not only that, but the technique was so powerful it gave him devastating wounds. Now, Itachi, who is currently right now giving Sasuke, you know, the Genjutsu treatment, this is when suddenly he then feels Kisame, like, getting injured as well as getting sent flying towards him, catch causing him to catch his partner right before he falls down. To think he was able to do this much damage to him. At this, he will look at Naruto's direction as Naruto will be sending him a smirk. 
It's a good thing you guys underestimate me. At this, Itachi says nothing as he looks at Kisame before turning to him. Then we won't make the same mistake again. As Itachi would say this, he would then walk towards Naruto with Naruto tempting up, as he could feel something dangerous approaching. However, right before things can escalate any further, this is when suddenly Jirai would then soon arrive, making a stance while also carrying the woman on his back. And as he does, Naruto would then shut down his cool moment by calling Jiraiya a nothing but a goodness pervert, as well as telling Jiraiya that he was extremely late, all because he had to call for booty. Now, of course, Jiraiya was insulted by this, but unfortunately, now was not the time, as this is when he then tries to trap both Kisame and Itachi. Unfortunately, Itachi couldn't let himself be captured as well as Kisame, so using the power of a Materatsu, he ends up burning a hole through the, you know, the stomach of the mountain toad, and due to that, both him and Kisame end up escaping. Now, Naruto is of course pissed off, but unfortunately, Jirai can't do anything about it right now, as this is when Gaio then also arrive, and after a while, you know, like, after a while fixing the problem with Jiraiya, as he, you know, accidentally kicked him in the face, he then takes Sasuke back since he was badly injured. So with that, we will now see it as Sasuke is now being taken back and soon Naruto and Jiraiya will then go back on the journey to find Tsunade. So we now move forward to when they find Tsunade as they soon found her at a bar just casually drinking along with Shizune. Now as they do, Jiraiya and Naruto would sit down there as of course Tsunade would be snarky with Jiraiya being rude to him cause she's drunk and also cause of the fact that you know she's hiding up her pent up emotions. And while doing so, Naruto says nothing more as he just orders some food and just casually sits there while eating and also drinking. You know, taking advantage of the situation. Now as he does, this is when suddenly, after a while just drinking and sitting there, the lady would then come with the trek as Jirai was trying to negotiate with Tsunade to become the fifth Okage. But as she sits there insulting them, Naruto did not care at all since he personally just didn't care. Alright? He didn't like Haruzen. He didn't like Minato. He didn't like any of them. Like, Naruto, he still has not changed that belief. He does not like them. It's just that simple. And and it doesn't even have to be that he doesn't like them. He just doesn't care about them. So as Naruto is just there enjoying his time, this is when suddenly the bill would then come, as this is when the lady would then ask who was paying for it. Now, as Tsunade was about to, you know, reach up and tell her that Jirai was paying, this is when Naruto wouldn't speak up first. Oh, yeah, the old drunk is paying over there. At this, Naruto would casually point at Tsunade, Surprising everyone as this is when Tsunade would then get multiple tick marks. Excuse me, Brad? Do you know how much in debt I am? I don't got money to pay for this shit. But this Naruto rolls his eyes. Well, you're over here drinking and you're here gave me a blessed meal, so I was expecting you're paying for it. Now, Tsunade was not going to let that slide as you know she is in debt, so she instantly gets up and challenges Naruto to a fight, asking him just who the heck he was. With Naruto casually telling her that he was going to be the one to beat up the drunk. Now, of course, Tsunade would be insulted as this is when they would now, this is when we now change scenes to when they're outside. Now, when they're outside, Jiraiya walks over to Naruto asking, like, what the heck he was doing as he has to realize something that Naruto, like, he was going up against one of the legendary Sanin. And while, yes, Tsunade is drunk, there is a ginormous chance that she might snap out of it and actually give Naruto a beating. But at the same time, as he looks over at Tsunade, she's honestly, like, like barely able to stand straight, so he thinks that Naruto has a good chance. Plus, he already knows what it's like to underestimate Naruto and pays the price, as he remembered back during the tuning exams. Naruto would shake his head, telling Jiraiya that he's got it, as just as they were about to fight, this is when Naruto would then announce the bet. Not only for who was going to pay for the bill, but another thing was, if Naruto wins, Tsunade has to go back to Konoha and become the fifth Okage. And if Naruto loses, he'll give her all the money that he has, as well as he would do anything for her for the past following time that he's with her. Now, of course, hearing this, Tsunade instantly bet on this, but also bets on her necklace, saying that if Naruto wins, she will give it to him. Now, Shizune would try to cry out to Tsunade, telling her not to do it, but Tsunade wouldn't look at her and just tell her a simple thing, telling her to shut up. So with that being said, the fight would then begin. Tsunade would tell Naruto that all she would use is a simple finger. With Naruto laughing, <laughs> well, I mean, I think you should be more worried if you're going to even keep that finger by the end of this. Now at this, Tsunade wonder what the heck Naruto meant, as Jirai would just shake his head. Yeah, never mind, I had nothing to be worried about. That kid is going to absolutely destroy her. Shizane, hearing this, would be confused as she asked Jirai what he meant, with Jirai just telling her to watch. As Tsunade would be there looking at Naruto, she would see multiple images of him as she was, like, really drunk, as she would shake her head from those thoughts. Alright, calm down. Jeez, I mean, it's just a bride. It's not like he can actually do some... 
However, right before she can do anything else, this is when suddenly she will then be kicked up into the air by a lightning-infused kick from Naruto. So Shizune will be so in shock that she couldn't believe it, as Tsunada will be, you know, sent flying into the air with her not even realizing it. As she would then feel like herself falling, she will be even more surprised as Naruto would appear right in front of her again, before once again getting punched in the stomach by a lightning hammer. At this, Tsunada will be sent flying a couple of feet, as she was unable to do anything but cough up and vomit out everything that she was drinking before suddenly flipping over. Damn brat! At this, Tsunade would then feel a generous amount of anger as she then charges it into a fist as she is when she then punches the ground with everything she got. Seeing this, Jiraiya then pales as he realized that legit she's about to cause ginormous amount of property damage which is definitely going to hit someone in his wallet. And just thinking this, Jiraiya would then realize something that this will probably hit his wallet before realizing that Naruto is here. Oh wait, never mind. At this, Naruto seeing what Tsunade was going to do would then instantly rush over to her as just as the ground was about to legit like cause a miniature earthquake in the entire district, Naruto would appear as he would then channel electricity into the ground. At this, the rumbling would then begin as multiple cracks began to form. However, as Naruto was charging electricity through it, this one suddenly the ground would just stop. As Naruto was setting multiple powerful electric waves to counter the force of Tsunade's punch. Due to this, it kind of canceled out the force and now was making the ground not being completely destroyed at least, or at least not just causing a miniature earthquake. As Tsunade would be there shocked that the kid was actually able to stop her attack, which Shizune just like paling at the fact that there was a kid who was able to match it with Tsunade's strength, this is when Naruto would smile. You lost, Granny. At this, Tsunade would be confused until she realized. She threw an entire punch. I lost. Tsunade couldn't believe it. She lost to a brat. As Tsunade would be there, Jiraiya would be, you know, happy as this meant that he doesn't have to pay for anything. As he realized that if that punch from Tsunade went through, that would be cause a ginormous amount of property damage. The man was already in debt because of the fact that, you know, for his research, all right? Which, by the way, I don't understand is what with these signings and losing ginormous amount of money because of their addiction? Like, what's, what's going on here, all right? It can't be that bad. But still... Thanks to this fact, Jiraiya was now happy he didn't have to pay him nothing, with Naruto then walking over to Tsunade, as Tsunade would be there looking at the ground in shock, this is when Naruto would then casually walk over and take the necklace away from her. Wait, don't! Shizune would then shout, but this is when Naruto would shake his head. Now, nah, if the granny wants it back, she's going to have to win it back. Or, if she wants it back, she should go over there and become Okage. Until then, I'm going to keep my hands on this lucky little number here. At this, Naruto would say this with a smirk as Tsunade says nothing on watches, as this is when Naruto would tell Jiraiya that it was time for them to go, with Naruto leaving. As after this, this is when suddenly one of the, you know, the waitresses that were there would then walk over to Tsunade before giving her the bill. As Tsunade would look at it, she would feel both upset, angry, yet at the same time happy, and also a little bit embarrassed, as she couldn't believe that she got her ass handed to by a brat, but also happy just by how like gutsy this kid was. As this kid legit had the guts to stand up to her and put her down. That's that's crazy. As this is where we now move forward. So we now move forward for the past following days. As after these days, Naruto would just be there as he would train. During this time, he was also told by Shizune that about the curse of the necklace and everything. But Naruto doesn't give a damn about that bullshit. After all, he beat fate before and he would beat it again. And another thing that ends up happening is that during this time, Tsunade is kind of out of it. As after she lost to Naruto, Jiraiya would soon end up meeting up with her later that night and actually tell her about Naruto's story. And after hearing this, Tsunade feels some type of sympathy for the kid as well as pity. But at the same time, she then shakes her head out of those thoughts as for the next following days, her and Jiraiya would then catch up. After a while, Jiraiya would soon threaten Tsunade as she knows about her connection with Orochimaru. And he tells her straight up that if she actually goes along with dry, well, sorry, with Orochimaru's plans, that he will end her. But Tsunade just ignores Jiraiya's warning and just tells him to drink his, his drink. So with that, they would then chug a small little sake, and that's when Jiraiya would then collapse on the ground as Tsunade had drugged him. As this is when she then goes up as she apologized to Jiraiya, as she was then going to Orochimaru to finish him off. After all... There was no way she was going to go with that snake. So there was no way she was going to trust him either. As we now move forward, we want to turn to the next day as we see Jiraiya end up getting up and instantly he rushes over to Naruto. 
ends up telling them about what happened and pretty much tells them to gather up so that way they can chase after Tsunade. So Naruto, Jiraiya, and Shizune were now after Tsunade. With Tsunade, she would soon arrive at the area and of course, the trade would go somewhere to canon and so finally she then tries to betray Orochimaru. Kabuto luckily is there as he tries to save Orochimaru and as he does, him and Kabuto would then face off against Tsunade. As during the beginning of the fight, Tsunade ends up dominating for the first half, but unfortunately Kabuto ends up, you know, actually like using her fear of blood against her, and this will cause Tsunade to start losing to the two of them. However, as she was losing though, this is when suddenly Jiraiya, Naruto, and Shizune would arrive, as just as Tsunade was getting picked on by Kabuto, Naruto would release a generous lightning hammer directly into Kabuto's face, sending him flying. Move it. The only person who's going to beat up on her is me. Now, of course, Tsunade would be there as she was shaking from the fear. And as Naruto is doing this, he does the one and simple thing that anyone should do in this situation. He snaps her out of it. As with the rough shakes, Tsunade would be snapped out of it. She would look directly into Naruto's eyes as Naruto would instantly end up flicking on the forehead. Ouch, what the heck was that for? Simple, you're being stupid. Now hurry up and get rid of this past trauma or whatever. We got a fight to do. And unless you're willing to sit here and die a pathetic death to a bunch of losers, I recommend you snap out of it and start picking up the fight. Now Tsunade was of course insulted by this as she'll be fueled by rage but at the same time she'll be happy. Cheeky little brat telling me what to do. How about you move and let me show you how it's done. At this Tsunade would then get up as she would then walk over to Orochimaru with Naruto just casually there watching her head off. Good, now that she's gone, I can go back to kicking your ass, Naruto would say as he then turns to Kabuto, who will be getting up. This is Naruto Uzumaki, the rookie of the year, the Jinjiriki of the Hidden Leaf. At this, Kabuto begins to shout out Naruto's info, and as he does, he then looks at Naruto before scoffing. I admit, you have great power, but you're nothing compared to me. At this, Jirai would actually warn Naruto that Kabuto was on the level of Kakashi, as Naruto stays silent for a little bit. Now Kabuto would think this would be Naruto actually like rethinking challenging him as he tries intimidating Naruto telling him that he was way out of his league and that he doesn't belong here. However, right before he can even realize it, Naruto had already appeared in front of him as this one suddenly ends up releasing a dual lightning chop on his throat causing Kabuto to actually lose consciousness for a little bit before suddenly he ends up kneeing him in the gut. Stupid, you think I care if you're that strong? All it means it's going to be a little bit harder to kick your ass. As Naruto would send Kabuto flying through the entire battlefield, this is when Shizune would try backing him up when Naruto was shaking his head. Nah, 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 it's fine. Let me handle this. I actually want to test out my training on this brat. Now, luckily, Kabuto was able to get up from the hit, as this is when suddenly he ends up creating two chakra scalpels. I'm going to end you for that, brat. As just like that, we would then finally have the showdown. As now that Tsunade had snapped out of it much sooner than in canon, she and, uh, and Jirai would be facing off against Orochimaru, and Orochimaru was heavily nerfed thanks to Haruzen, so he was getting beaten up by the two of them. And while doing so, Kabuto was currently fighting against Naruto, and unfortunately he was losing. And Kabuto was shocked about this. I, I mean, just from his measure of strength from before, I thought for sure I could take him on, but now he couldn't believe this was the same kid from the tuning exams. There's no way his strength could increase this much in such a short period of time. I mean, he knew Naruto was a prodigy, but this, this was too much. As Naruto was blitzing around the battlefield, Kabuto would try to keep up with him and then at least try landing a blow with his, chakra, with his chakra scalpel, but unfortunately, it was useless. Naruto was way too fast for Kabuto to keep up with, and as he tried slashing him, Naruto would just disappear in a bolt of lightning, appear behind him, and strike him down. He was getting overwhelmed. Dang it! Is that all you can do? Run around hitting me like a coward? At this, Naruto ends up dodging out the way of another chakra scalpel as he ends up laughing. <laughs> We're shinobis. What, are, what do you think we are? Samurai? Don't make me laugh. You're the one who picked this fight and now you're losing and complaining about it. At this, this will piss off Kabuto enough as this one suddenly he ends up seeing an opening as he slashes at Naruto's shoulder. Now, this will cause Naruto to actually, you know, lose feeling in that shoulder for a little bit as he ends up flipping over as he has to legit, like, you know, try to rework his arm. I like that. At this, Naruto looks down at his arm as this one he tries thinking up of a strategy here. Interesting, Naruto would say. At this, this is when Naruto would instantly put his hand on his head. As Kabuto would be there watching this, he would be confused about what Naruto was doing until suddenly Naruto's head would then spark with electricity and as he does, Naruto would then suddenly be able to move his hand and his shoulder once again. What? 
Ah, this Naruto is smiling as he ends up actually thinking of a new idea. As what if he was able to actually manipulate his, his electricity to control his body internally? That means he can fully control his body, releasing as much strength as he wants, or maybe even increasing the healing factor and everything. This boosted Naruto's confidence as he also felt a lot of ideas pulling through him, but now is not the time. As right now, Kabuto would just be looking at Naruto like, this, this kid was insane. Are you kidding me right now? Did he literally just force his body to feel where I just struck him? He's insane. As he would be looking at Naruto, Naruto would be shrugging off the blow as he ends up smiling. I thank you, you just gave me a brand new idea. And for that, I'll finish you off with the new technique I've been working on. A little something, nothing too important. At this, Naruto would then suddenly end up creating a blue sphere in hand, with one hand. At this, Kabuto would look at it as this when he didn't realize the technique. That technique, it can't be. At this, Orochimaru who is currently battling Tsunade and Jiraiya would also see the technique, and he was in shock. Jiraiya, you taught that brat that technique? At this, Jiraiya didn't have a smile on his face. Now I have to admit, I don't like those rookie of the years or prodigies as people call them. But I have to admit, this kid and his father are one of a kind. And I am definitely would rather choose them than anyone else. As this is when Naruto would inform it. The Rasengan. At this, Kawato would be looking at the dangerous technique as he can feel the generous amount of chakra that was pulling in. Still, even if you do know how to use that technique, there's no way I would allow, it to allow you to hit it. At this, Kawato would be confident as he doubts that Naruto even knows how to use it properly, but this is when Naruto would prove him wrong. Yeah, you're right. I don't know how to use it properly. At this, Kawato would smirk. No, I know how to use it better than that. At this, this is when Kawato's eyes would then go wide, and including Jiraiya as he did not know about this, as everyone can feel a generous amount of power just releasing from the attack as it will grow bigger and bigger in size. And as it does, this is when suddenly the colors would then transform. Instead of being the usual blue, it transforms into a yellowish color as lightning begins to spark from it. And as it does, this is when suddenly it will then transform into a miniature dragon head. This kid just did the impossible, Dry, I would say, as he was actually looking at the technique now, as he couldn't believe it. Naruto had combined an element with the Rasengan. But as he does, he wouldn't actually have a mature smile on. But if anyone could have done it, I had no doubt it would have been you. As he would look down at the technique, Naruto would have a smile on his face. As Kabuto feeling the dangerous attack would and realize he needs to run like fast. Crap, I need to dodge. But as he does, it was already too late as Naruto had disappeared in a bolt of lightning and appeared right in front of him. Consider this the end, Kabuto. At this, Kabuto can do nothing as he would be slammed by the attack as Naruto would release the name. Lightning Dragon Rasengan. As Kabuto would be swallowed up by the sphere, he would then actually be devoured by a dragon on top of that, as the dragon would swallow up the sphere, including Kabuto within it, before letting out a ginormous explosion. As the explosion would be released, everyone could see nothing more but a ginormous lightning dragon shooting out of it, as Naruto would be there watching his attack go through. By the time the attack died down, everyone would see Kabuto, or at least what was left of him. The boy was nothing more but charred skin. And you could legit see his bones as the man was like gone. Like he was for sure dead. Orochimaru will be there as he saw one of his loyal disciples fall before him. And he'll be cursing out. Damn it. Damn it. No. No. However, right before he can do his whole like, you know, screaming and panicking. So I will punch him in the face. and him flying. This is the end, Orochimaru. Consider this over. At this, Orochimaru couldn't do anything. His arms were injured. So that means he couldn't do the summoning jutsu. And at the same time, he was being surrounded by all fronts, as now Shizune and Naruto were joining on the fight. So with his back against the wall, Orochimaru was down to the only solution that he had. An emergency exit. So with this being said, Orochimaru would then bite on his lip, releasing enough blood, as this when suddenly he ends up swinging his arms around, before finally he ends up slamming his arms with a, a small bit of blood. Take me home now! He shouts. At this, a seal would then activate on his arm, surprising the others as they rushed towards him. Naruto would disappear in a bowl of lightning with Jiraiya, Tsunade, and Shizune rushing towards him, but it was too late. As Orochimaru had disappeared in a puff of smoke, leaving nothing there as Naruto would be legit like a few milliseconds away from getting to him. Damn it! Naruto would shout as Orochimaru had just escaped, and had just escaped himself being captured. However, there was one good thing from this, and that was the fact that they made Orochimaru scared, they, Orochimaru didn't get his arms healed, 
And he also, he lost Kabuto, one of his most loyal servants. As with all this, we can now move forward. With, with Enrochimaru now escaping, they now had time to die down and relax. As after like clearing out Kabuto, as of course Jirai actually made a miniature gravestone for the boy. As honestly, he felt kind of pity that the boy had to just grow up with such a creepy man. But at the same time, the boy did a very devious act, so it, it, it felt kind of mixed up for Jiraiya. At the same time, Naruto didn't care about what he'd done, alright? This was not the first time, and definitely won't be the last. So, he personally just doesn't care and just moves on. As after this, we can now finally put a close to the Tsunade retrieval arc. As after all these shenanigans had happened, Tsunade will soon declare that she will become the fifth Okage. And with that, the team within the sides return back home. As this will be end to part 5 of What If Naruto Had Loxus's Abilities. Oh my god, thank you all so much for tuning into this What If, guys. That was a wild ride, okay? That was crazy. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Uh, if you guys noticed that I've been able to like go through the stories much more smoothly in the past two What Ifs, it's because of the fact that I had a different way of writing my stories now. I have a different way, and it's way faster, it's way more comfortable, and that way I can remember everything I've done without me having to sit there and scroll through my entire video or reading the entire story from the beginning to the end. So yeah, guys, this is... Yeah, this is big news for me. I'm very proud of myself, and yeah, here it is. Hopefully you guys do like this way, the way this what-if went. I do want this Naruto to have like an emotional growth, mostly due to the fact that, well, if Naruto doesn't have an emotional growth, he will end up similar to Sasuke, and no one wants that, buddy. So yeah, I yeah, I just wanted Naruto to emotionally grow up in this one, and now he's learning to have, how to make connections. But don't think for a second this means I'm going to let Naruto be walked over by a bunch of people. Like, he's not going to let that slide, alright? But he will be more understanding for them. He will be more trust trustful to people. But he will always be on edge if he doesn't trust you at all. But still, at least Naruto's making progress, right? But besides that, guys, I'm going to end this video. Thank you all so much for tuning in to this What If. Comment down below what your thoughts and feelings, any What Ifs ideas, if you guys have any. And it's your host, Seiji Samurai, and he's signing off. Peace, and have a lovely day.